Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk to you about the design feedback gem template for FigJam. Well, that's a mouthful, uh, but it's simple. It's a, it's a, it's a template for you to do design critiques. I just don't like to use the term design critique because that kind of evokes the, the really bad vibe. Like when people think about critique, they think about art or movies and they think about being super critical, super destructive. That's not what we want on a design critique, right? Uh, that's why calling it a design feedback gem is, in my opinion, a little bit uh, of a more easy to sell idea, especially when you're introducing this concept to a team that maybe don't have like a strong sense of psychological safety and they just don't know each other that much. Uh, and they need that extra like a uh, little glue to feel like this is something that they want to do every week, sometimes even more than once or twice a week. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll guide you through it. Um, the, the main thing here is, uh, you can go to the Figma community here on the community icon and you can search for design feedback jam. I'll also provide the link in the description. Uh, and what you're going to want to do is you want to open it in Fig Jam and you get it on your drafts. I hope that you notice the big start here, start just making sure that this is where you start. Uh, I would actually advise you to, even if you don't like to read, to read a little bit of all of the concepts around here. I tried to make it digestible, but actually giving you all the information you need, especially if this is your first time uh, doing one or facilitating one or presenting in one or being a participant. Uh, so there's information here for everyone. Uh, the first thing you want to do is, uh, of course, duplicate this, like save it in the right place. I would advise like a design create jam um, folder on, on your team, on your projects. I advise you to keep all of them in one place. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is you put the date, you put the name of the person presenting uh, design. Uh, and then let me just zoom in. Yeah, the information is all here. Fill up the step two copy over the design you want feedback on, whatever it is, if it's diagrams, notes, uh, it might be content from a content designer, UX writer. So you should copy it over to this file, but I'll show you where. Uh, and then you should book the jam, like even either, either in a recurrent time slot or you just put it, book a time slot where, where people have time to, to do the jam you could even do it like a synchronously, like, right. You could record this jam the same way that I'm recording this with an, an app like loom or, or some other, like a synchronous method, like putting a message on Slack and making sure you write everything that you need to in that case. Uh, let me just zoom out. Um, so you have the instructions here. They look like a lot. They're not. They're actually really easy to get into. It's instructions on how to jam. But for instance, like if you already read this and you want to do a jam, what you need to look at is step two, which is add it here and add the context here. Um, you're going to need three things. You're going to need one facilitator. Uh, that should be a manager or the leader of the design team, uh, someone with authority, because that person will be in charge of keeping this thing on track, uh, like stopping conversations that cannot happen, think people going outside of the rules of the jam, which are clearly stated here. Everyone participating needs to be agreeing to follow the rules in order for this thing to work and for this thing to be adopted long-term in your team. Uh, you can, of course, come up with your own rules. These are the rules that I found that work well uh, and enable the right kind of environment, the right kind of at atmosphere for this thing to catch off, like for the design gem to be a recurring thing that people really want to do and not something that they're forced to do, which is not what you want here. Uh, you're going to need the presenter, which is the person that has design or the team that has design to show. And then, of course, you're going to need participants. Uh, things that are important, like to keep in mind, uh, I've made it sure the tip and rules are here. So it's like ask questions to clarify. Don't don't like suppose things. Don't start giving feedback without actually understanding what the person has, is showing you. Uh, be positive. Yes. 
you can be positive and criticized negatively, right? It's a bit weird, but yeah, you can just don't destroy work. People are not there to get your work destroyed. They need to move on from it, right? They need to have an extra idea, uh, some direction to go into. So keep that in mind. Don't give feedback like, I don't like it. That's completely forbidden on a feedback gem. This is not about liking. This is about how can we make this better with logic, right? So think about design principles in your org, think about uh, product principles, think about the goals of what you're trying to achieve with the design and less about uh, the things that one person likes and another person doesn't. Uh, of course, it's impossible to keep people from doing that, but the moderator needs to kind of try to be like, okay, I, we got that you don't like it, but that is not helpful. Uh, again, stay constructive suggest ideas. That's pretty much it. Uh, then you have like a little bit of a gem structure, which is like kind of adaptable. This is a gem for 20 minutes for one person so that you can have one hour with two people presenting. You might just dilate, dilate this time and, and, and make it 40 minutes. Uh, I don't advise making it an hour if you want to take an hour because sometimes discussions start happening that have a little bit of an extra interest. And so you allow some time for people to go outside of the jam and, and, and just talk about things. Uh, so five minutes with the presenter giving context, five minutes of participants asking clarifying questions, seven minutes of writing silent feedback. And this is important because uh, this is like the difference between brainstorming and brain writing, it's that people don't influence each other when they're giving the feedback. Uh, if anyone, everyone is like quiet, maybe with some music on from, from Fig Jam and, and, and just like paying attention to what they're writing without write, write, like reading what other people are saying, it will give you much more better feedback. Then this third three minutes is where you can dilate it a lot. It's go around the table, ask each person, uh, can you, can you talk to me about your main piece of feedback and, and, and clarify it for, for the presenter. So yeah, I keep on going here about making it your own instructions on how to use fig jam, because you might be doing this not with your design team, but with the stakeholder that doesn't use feed. Fig Jam. I don't advise that you start doing this with stakeholders as the first thing, because you, when you have stakeholders, you're going to want the team to act as a group moderator. Uh, you're going to want the, the team to be able to tell the, the stakeholder, doesn't matter if the stakeholder is a hippo, uh, and to say like, look, we have rules here. Uh, we are happy to have you here, but the rules need to be followed in order for us to feel like this was a productive and engaging meeting feedback jam and we feel like we can go forward and we can make our work better with your feedback and not be another chance for there's plenty of that which is like stakeholders evaluating the work and saying exactly what they want this is not that opportunity you should keep that out of the feedback jam as much as possible here to the stuff that you need to edit uh just you can read this. I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up. So the context, right? What are you working on and what for? Then you can go like, what's the problem? What are you trying to solve? What is the supporting data? What is the time frame for this work so that everyone's on board with what can be done and can't? And then like other keys, like useful information, like who are you working with? The key stakeholders and their feedback. And then make sure that you let people know exactly what you're looking for, right? Depends on the stage of the work, but don't, don't set the, the stage for success. Don't, don't say at the very late stage, like, oh, you can give me ideas that go completely against the idea because you're not going to have time to implement them, to take them in consideration. So make sure that you ask for the feedback that you want to receive, but also that you can act on. And then after you kind of fill this up, you can, uh, you can move the carrot. So there's three stages that I suggest it's an early stage. So 
or just exploring ideas. Nothing stuck in stone. All ideas and suggestions are welcome from the feedback. I have like do's and don'ts, things that you want at this stage and things you don't want at this stage. So if you forgot to clarify what you want, there's always like rules here. And remember the moderator needs to focus on, on enforcing these uh, as much as possible to really avoid that people get frustrated. There's a mid stage where you already defined the problem. You're working hard at nailing the design solutions. Uh, but so it's like, ideally you would have several solutions at this stage. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit, um, I'm a bit recovering from a, a throat bug. So, <clears throat> and then there's a wrap up, like one last check for every like small detail. So now it's time for like those, like really small, like color spacing, small content details, copy stuff, grammar, you name it. And any kind of like sherry on top things that you might want to suggest. And of course, obviously this is not the time to send a new idea into the air because there's absolutely no time to do it. Of course, at this stage. So what you want to do next, uh, after you read all of this, uh, and when you want to do the, the gem is copy your work into this little part, expand it, expand the section, make sure that uh, you have all the space you need, and then you're gonna want to do the actual gem, right? So the moderator is the one that keeps track of, of the time you'd want. I added a little bit of a egg timer graph here with like the idea that it's going to take around 20 minutes. I have an agenda here, but to be honest, like you could track it here, but my suggestion is, um, to maybe use like the fig jam and then maybe have some music on especially at the silent phase. I think you can use this for the other phases, but on the silent phase, it makes some sense to have some music so that people don't get weirded out by, because they're doing this remote, everyone alone in their own corner. Uh, of course, if you're in a room together with people, you, you might want to still use this format, but you won't, uh, of course, put music on. That's kind of obvious. Oh. So that's pretty much it. Like the, the main thing that's really important is if you're going to be the moderator, make sure that you know the ins and outs of what you're doing, uh, adapt this document to, with your ideas, be welcome. You are welcome to do that. Yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, I kind of like suggest that, that you keep the comments on this separate file. In, fig, in fig, feedback jams that I had, um, people have shown prototypes uh, and, and they were okay because the team wasn't that big to have all of the comments in the prototype. I kind of have this feeling that when you are in a bigger organization and there's a lot of people uh, giving feedback already, stakeholders and all of that, you don't want the design team feedback on the same file that you're doing the work because it generates the, the bad expectation that all feedback given the feedback jam is supposed to be acted on. And that's definitely not the case. Like feedback is a gift and you can choose to like it or not. You can choose to do what you want to do with it. And that's really important. Make sure that you do you, uh, as I said, it's up to the team to define their own rules and to change this up a little bit uh, and to make sure that this works for you. The goal here is that you create a sense of collaboration, a sense of, of good practices in terms of uh, providing good actionable feedback to everyone in the team and make sure that people are respected uh, while doing so. Uh, I hope you have fun applying it. Uh, I hope you like it. Tell me if you do. Um, like this, like this video, maybe as a, a little bit of a little nudge, uh, consider subscribing if you just arrived here or if you've been following my videos, but haven't subscribed yet. So with that said, see you later. Bye-bye.